So a lot of um, synchronicity happened today and I had to tell you about it right now. So I was inside uh, Digital Jungle right here, right? This is a co-working space that I work at here in Tulum, Mexico. And uh, it's one of the best places in the world. And I was reading a primate's memoir. It's an amazing book. I'll show it to you in my next video. I'll show you the, the hard copy that I have. And Robert Sapolsky, the author, was talking about this baboons, you know, baboons. These are um, monkeys that live in Kenya. And he's been in Kenya for the last 33 years. I think every summer he goes to Kenya to watch baboons. Uh, he monitors how they behave and uh, he writes about it, right? So he's basically written in the current chapter, he's talking about a group of baboons in which the alpha male named Saul, S-A-U-L, Saul, he has uh, been the alpha male for a long time. And what's interesting about Saul's personality is that he's a loner, right? So if you are someone who is introverted and th this brings me to people like Jordan Peterson, who are alpha males, who are also sort of loners, but they are not like Saul. And I'll tell you why all of this is so important. So Jordan Peterson right now just made a, a podcast with Joe Rogan and it's so awesome. I've watched 20 minutes of it and I'm already amazed. And the thing with Jordan Peterson is that a lot of people have been attacking him, right? So for example, the trans community, you know, the LGBT, Q community, the government of Canada, you name it, you know, the, 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 the far left, uh, lots of enemies of Jordan Peterson and reading this chapter about Saul and what happened, it, the fact that he's a loner, the fact that he was always alone and what happened to him while he was an alpha. This is the story that I want to tell you. So in baboons, what happens is the alpha male gets to mate with all the females and the number two in the troop gets to mate with the the the, the female that is this is uh fertile the day before and the day after her ovul ovulatory period right so the the female the best chance of the female to have a baby that day is when the alpha is with her and the day before and the day after is when the the number two is with her and then two days before and two days after is when the number three is with her. So this is how the baboons work. And so becoming the alpha in a baboon is very, in a baboon troop is very important. So uh, Saul was in the wilderness. He was uh, sort of, uh, he sort of came out of nowhere, right? And so in this book, A Primate's Memoir, Sapolsky's talking about the story of these baboons. So first Solomon was the alpha. He uh, made a few mistakes and then Urea became the alpha. And then he made a few mistakes and then Saul became the alpha. But Saul was a very, very unique alpha male because he would wake up first. He would be out hunting first. He would not sit around and yawn like the other alphas in the, from the past. He was a very unique alpha. So he stayed alpha for a while. And the, and the interesting thing was that there was no number two, right? Usually when you have an alpha male, there's a sort of a close number two who can any time become an alpha because he would challenge the alpha. But in this case, Saul is like Jordan Peterson. There is no number two. And recently what has happened with Jordan is that the government of Canada has told him that if he doesn't get retrained uh, of how to use social media, they will take away his license and what jordan says is that if you want to tell the truth in life then you have to have your house in order right and i believe that community is one of the top keys to having your house in order now what happened with saul something very interesting happened saul because he was a loner there was no number two, right? There was no, no one close to number two. So what happened is the number two and number three teamed up. They formed a coalition. And there's this uh, very interesting um, gestures and, 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 and sounds that two baboons do to form a coalition. 
So they formed a coalition and they went to attack Saul and they got their asses kicked. Then what happened is that the number two and number three got a couple of more and four people went to attack Saul and Saul kicked their ass again. And then six people, six baboons, six people, six baboons got together and Sapolsky's writing this, he's narrating this literally as he's like he can relive those times that he saw this happen. So six baboons got together and went to attack Saul. And Sapolsky had his money on Saul because Saul had never lost. He'd been an alpha for many, many years. And, and what do you think happened? Saul aggressively made a, made a hunch, made a, made a leap at two of those six. But through some luck, because baboons cannot plan these strategies, but through some luck, the two that were most physically capable of taking down Saul were on opposite sides. So you can imagine Saul in the middle and six baboons surrounding him. And the, the most physically capable were, were on opposite sides. So when Saul went to attack one of them, the other one was behind him. And Saul missed just a little bit as he was trying to attack them. He missed just a little bit. He fell on his left side and the other guy who was behind him attacked him. And then all six of them completely kicked the shit out of him. And for three days after he laid on the forest and then Sapolsky did a blood test on him, his cortisol, cortisol levels were super high, soaring cortisol levels, right? The stress hormone cortisol, 25% of his body weight was lost just in three days. He had an upper arm was broken and his shoulder was dislocated. And he just laid there for three days and then he went back to the wilderness and left the troop. So what does that tell us about how, how is Saul different from Jordan? How is Saul different from Jordan Peterson? Well, here's the key. Jordan knows something so important and that is community. And why did this stick so well for me? Today at the gym, I was talking to my buddy, um, Malcolm. Malcolm is an amazing guy. I'm going to interview him on the Doc for Han podcast soon. And Malcolm, uh, him and, and his girlfriend, they, they come every morning They you know, they work out at the jungle gym and we work out, you know, they're in their corner. I'm in my corner where we, uh, we, we share a lot of love together. And this morning, Malcolm was leaving and we were talking about the trauma of Tim Ferriss and how he was molested, but when he was two to four years old and, uh, Tim is talking about that. I'm watching that podcast by Tim Ferriss and I talked to Malcolm about it and Malcolm also told me his life's experience and we're going to talk about all that in the podcast coming up. But one thing Malcolm said really, really stuck with me. He said, Farhan, I was listening to Joe Dispenza and I personally haven't really paid attention to Joe or, or listened to any of his videos or read any of his books, but I will because I've been seeing him a, a few different ways from different friends and colleagues. And Malcolm said, you know, Joe Dispenza said that the future of our community, the future of humanity is not in science, but it is in community. And, and, and that made me really think because Malcolm has his own community of men. It's called, uh, it's called the rising masculinity, right? And we have our own community, Afro D nation. Um, and if you're not part of Afro D nation, go ahead and, and become a part of it. It's a Facebook group amazing people. We inspire each other, sh show videos, show challenges. Uh, we have five full-time coaches that are devoted to helping out the members for free. So you can join for free. Um, and this concept of community, right? Saul didn't have community. He was the alpha male, but he was a loner and he didn't have that coalition. He didn't have that collaboration to save him when he was surrounded by those six people, those six baboons. But Jordan Peterson is not Saul, right? He's not a baboon, he's a human. And the fact that he has made these coalitions, right? With Andrew Huberman, with Joe Rogan, with, uh, with all the people he interviews, with people inside the government, with 
people who are wealthy, like an Elon Musk, because of that, because of those coalitions Jordan has made, he will never be dethroned from his from his alpha male ship. Right? And this is the lesson for you. As you, regardless of if you're introverted or extroverted, right? because Jordan Peterson is introverted and, and he was able to make these coalitions. Same thing with Tim Ferriss, he's introverted. And one thing that really s stuck out to me is that Jordan said, if you want to tell the truth, then you must have your house in order. And what does that mean? Well, Jordan, has three streams of income, right? He has his he has his business, right? The self-authoring and, and other things that he's doing, right? His talks and seminars, you know, his books, so his business. He has his clinical practice and he has his professorship. So if they fired him from his professorship and they fired him from clinical practice or took away his license, he still has his business, right? So he's with multiple streams of income. So rather than putting all your eggs in one basket, which I'm definitely guilty of doing in my entire life. So I am learning stuff from this, that we don't have to put all our eggs in one basket. We can have multiple streams of income, right? Multiple ways to bring in customers, which is what we're doing at Afro D now. And also having coalitions and collaborations. So when you do get a, a group of six baboons surrounding you, because humans are sometimes baboons, you will have a community to stand behind you and defend you. So that is the, the lesson for today that I learned from uh, reading a primate's memoir, Robert Sapolsky as the author, one of my favorite authors, and, uh, and what I learned from Malcolm today at the gym, and also what I learned from uh, so far from the Jordan Joe interview that I've watched. Anyway, that's the video for you. Thank you guys for um, watching. I'm here in the jungle in Tulum. I just wanted to take a few minutes break to make this video for you for today. And uh, very soon we'll be uh, do, shooting podcasts every day, having interviews. If you want to join our Facebook group, our Facebook community, Afro D Nation, uh, the link is in the description. It's, it's very simple, it's free to join. So go ahead and join that as soon as possible and get inspired uh, for your uh, health. Uh, and, and well-being and your spirituality and your emotional health and mental health and everything, right? And also, I would love for you to discuss in the comments, what do you think about trauma? Trauma is something that I'm really getting into now and I'm reading books on it and watching a lot of videos on it. I've, I've learned so far about Gabor Mate, Tim Ferriss, um, a couple of other people bought a few books that I'm about to start reading. So yeah, what is your what is your experience with trauma? This is something that's going to become a theme of this channel. The interviews that I'll be doing with plant medicine experts, with shamans, with therapists, with coaches about trauma and childhood trauma. And um, tell me about some meditations that you're doing, or um, some things you're learning, some books you've been reading recently about this topic, or, or anything that has to do with men's health in general. And I would love to know. All right, guys, let's continue to expand our community and keep growing. Love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.